Good morning. Welcome back to Tuesday Entrepreneurship. My name is Joy Mochache. My social media handles are Joy underscore Mochache. This is hashtag why in the morning. Remember to always put your hashtag Tuesday Entrepreneurship. The way you can get in touch with us is through our Facebook. That is Y254 channel. On Twitter, it is Y254 channel as well. On an Instagram, it's Y254 underscore channel. Remember, you can catch up on everything that you've missed and everything that you want to watch again on YouTube. We also want you to subscribe to us on YouTube. It's the same name, Y254 Channel. I'd like to welcome our next guest today. We've got a wonderful entrepreneur. She's a young, young lady who has started a business where she works with leather to create beautiful pieces such as bags, belts, and other things um, that she will showcase and share with us. Her name is Violet Kariuki. Virginia Kariuki, excuse me. Uh, Karibi sana, Miss Kariuki. Thank you very welcome much. Welcome so much for to our me. show. Thank you. Yes. yes. And so you are an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur. Yeah. Not only that, mm -hmm. you are a feminist. I am a feminist. And you are what we call a pro African. Yes. I'd like to know what that means. Um, okay, let me tell a story. Sure, so sure. A couple of weeks late a couple of weeks earlier, a friend of mine was asking me if I would think if I would think about like doing mass production mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, my brand, the logo is Vicky Rotet, then the phrase is handmade in Kenya. Yes. So for me, what sets my items apart is A, that the fact that it's an African brand, it's a Kenyan brand, mm -hmm. we make it here locally, mm -hmm. and for anyone to buy it either locally or abroad or anywhere else, then you will know that this item has gone through a whole process where it's people who are actually interacting with it. So yeah, you, you're yeah. buying, mm. when you when anyone buys a piece of my item, mm. I feel like they get a couple, like a piece of my soul and heart because everything goes into it, the design process, mm. the whole beadwork, the stitching, although I have someone who does the stitching for me. Mm -hmm. So that is what me I mean by Pro Africa. And also I would love to portray another, uh, the, the beautiful side of Africa and the beautiful side of Kenya because we have a lot of people and um, on mainstream TV, mm -hmm. whenever you go and search maybe Africa or mm -hmm. Kenya, like the whole situation with the suit, yes. that is that got such a huge coverage and people usually look at Africa as uh, a third world co continent or something, but mm -hmm. we have so many things going on for us. Mm -hmm. I feel like the fashion brand the African one, um, especially the Ankara and Kitenge are really being appreciated at the moment. So yeah. that is what I, I mean by being pro-African. Oh, I see. So yes. you support all things African. All, all things up Africa. I think I'm pro-African too then. <laughs> <laughs> I think you I'm pro-African too, if that's yeah. the case, because I do love to support all things African. Yeah. I love your pieces. They're beautiful. I can Thank smell you. the leather. You guys should smell this. Oh, please. Just, you can <laughs> smell the leather. It's <laughs> genuine stuff, I tell you. I'd like to talk about the name. Um, mm -hmm. It's V Kirotet Designs. Yes. How did you... What what does the V Kirotet mean? Okay, so V stands for my name, Virginia. Virginia. Um, I'm very proud of that name. I don't know why. I just love it. No, it's name. a beautiful <laughs> name. <laughs> it's a beautiful you. name. Um, Kirotet is Maasai, although I'm not Maasai. I have a thing for the Maasai culture. Yes, so because they're unapolog unapologetically African. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like it's the one brand that when anyone thinks Kenya, they think Maasai. Yeah. And they have such beautiful beadwork so items. Nice. So since I work with, with beadwork, then I figured then the name should come from an ethnic culture that we have here so mm. the name is Maasai okay and then it means precious handcrafts precious so handcrafts. the crafts are handmade and they're precious to me and to everyone so yes speaking of handmade uh -huh. so it means precious handcrafts yes these pieces I'm looking at are handmade they're handmade mm. okay we stitch we stitch them using a sewing machine yes, yes. but yes they're all handmade mm. yes so that means there's a lot of detail that goes into it yes yeah and that's the soul you're talking about that is about. the soul i was talking about the hard work yes. it's, it's not just coming out of my machine right in it's bulk not in bulk mass production you set yes. in some some whatever some details and then 10 minutes later you have like 100 pieces yes it's yeah. nothing like that yeah. they're very special pieces Thank and you. i actually respect designers who take the time to make one by one pieces like this mm -hmm. and even take the time to make them handcrafted adding small little um embellishments and details to them i really yeah. respect that thank you yes and i'd like to ask mm -hmm. how did you start this off how did this all begin how did v curated designs you know get a move on 
Hmm. Okay, so uh, at my friend's, it wasn't a baby shower. So when she got, when she gave birth to her kid, mm-hmm. uh, when we had gone to her to hospital to see her, mm-hmm. so I saw her sister-in-law in this bracelet, a uh, Maasai bracelet, the mm-hmm. one sold at um, Maasai Market. Okay. At that moment, I had been an employee for a cleared campus, I think in 2014. That is when I graduated. Mm-hmm. So this was like three years ago. Mm. So I figured, I was like, mm, that looks pretty, but I, I think I can make it. So <laughs> I, I mentioned it to my friend and he was like, okay, I dare you to do it. I dare you. Yes. Okay. So um, I went, I, we bought some beads. We bought what things that I figured that would be used to make, to make the bracelet. I went home. I spent like four hours making one bracelet because mm. I had no idea like how to go, out, to go about it. But it turned out okay. And okay. then... The following day, I took it to him. I was like, see, I can actually do it. But it took so much time. I didn't know it would be this difficult. So he told me he can get someone to teach me to do the beadwork. Mm -hmm. And then, so from there, I just learned the basic beadwork items. So how to make, like, basically the beadwork and the jewelry that you can see at Maasai Market. That is how I started. So um, I then graduated to working with brass and horn when I was going to buy some more supplies, mm. I met this guy who had these beautiful pieces, the brass and horn. Yeah. So we, we, we met, I said, I gave him, at, be, at in the beginning, I gave him the designs and he did them for me. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, when he had forged a, a relationship, I went and got into his um, workshop. And then he was very kind. He actually taught me how to do it. Aww. Yes. So whenever I'm free and have some bit of time, I can go there and we can work together. But mostly he does a production for me whenever I'm not so busy, whenever I'm busy. Mm-hmm. And then for the bugs, I saw a bug, a very beautiful bug mm-hmm. uh, being sold in town. So I asked how much it was. I was told 35. So in my head, okay. I was like, it's 3,500. <laughs> so I went withdrew my money i'm like okay here give me my bag so she's like um well it's three it's 30 it's 35,000 i was like oh oh okay so why she she explained that it was leather but you know you can you can feel you can feel the difference of genuine leather and rexine yes so in as much as it was maybe high quality rexine it was i still felt it it didn't feel like leather it was a fake basically. Yes. So uh, I figured, hmm, then let me let me look for someone who can make for me a leather bag. I got someone. Um and then I wanted my piece to stand out. I wanted it to represent the things that I love and I had come to appreciate the work that goes into beadwork. Mm-hmm. So when the bag was made, I did um a like beadwork pattern, a very simple one. Um, and then a friend of mine saw it and she was so interested. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, you something. want one? Yes. So I made one for her and I figured this can be a business. So we started the bug business. And that's how it began. That is how it began. That's a beautiful story. <laughs> Thank what? you. That's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you want to tell me that there are pieces out there. What did you call it? That looks like leather? Rex- Rexin. Rexin? Yes. I'm sure I've bought something thinking it was leather and it's probably that. Because there's sometimes <laughs> yeah. something you buy, it's genuinely leather. Mm-hmm. Then like four or five years down the lane, yeah. there's it some wet. It starts chipping off or then something. Then you're like, hold up a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hold, you start asking yourself <laughs> questions. You're like, but this thing looked so genuine in yeah. the beginning. Even the price was so genuine. Exactly. So people fall under that trap, it seems, most a of lot, the time. A lot. And another thing that got me into working with, with genuine leather, in yeah. as much as Rexin, I can make it a bit more affordable and sell more pieces. Mm, yeah. um, I have a friend who had a bag, who, who still has a bag, mm. um, like a clutch, like a very tiny bag. She told me she got it from her mom. Her mom had it when she was in campus and, and she still, still has it now. It's still in good condition. So whenever like the stitches come out, she just goes to a fundi, a good fundi. They redo the stitch work, but it's basically, it looks like it's new. That's the thing with leather. It, exactly. it, it doesn't age. Yes. Like if it's taken care of, that yeah. stuff can look good forever. Yeah. So I figured if you can get and if you can invest in a bag, a very good bag that you can even let down to like your daughter or your son you know it can pass down a whole generation and carry so many memories and stories so Mm. that is why i decided to work with genuine leather 
Okay. Yeah. And seeing that, you know, so sometimes in Kenya right now, it's so hard to get uh, employment and you're a young lady. Yeah. Who, are you employed at the same time or is this something that you've focused on is business right now? So right now it's business 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and my it's own. putting food on the table for you. It's working fine. Um, it's been a struggle. I, okay. won't, I won't lie about that. It's oh, been a yeah, struggle, yeah, but honesty is best. Um, things are looking up in as much as I feel like it would have grown a bit faster had the economy been better. Yeah. But, you know, I, you know, I'm still grateful for everything that I have at the moment. The business is doing fine. Um, it gives me back money. So, you yeah. know. Mm. baby steps that's what matters baby yeah. steps yeah. yeah and i'd like to know if you were to expand mm -hmm. currently what do you work with i see bags mm -hmm. i see a belt mm -hmm. are there any other pieces that you make and if not what other pieces would you like to venture into making um i do also travel bags so okay. every jewelry piece i'm, we I'm wearing i made I love your earrings. Thank you. I, I, I hope you. I know you're seeing me looking at them from the corner. Yeah. I absolutely adore so your earrings. Every piece I'm wearing is mine. Uh -huh. um, I would love to get into making. I mean, shoes, shoes and leather jackets. I'm very passionate about jackets, so leather jackets will probably be a very good. Like it's it's in the sights for me in the future. Right. Yeah. Okay. Leather jackets. Yeah. Ish. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing this business by yourself or do you have a partner? Is it a personal venture? It's a personal venture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're starting out, in as much as, you know, people will support you and be like, yeah, you go, you know, it's hard to get someone who will give you equity when they have not seen it, like when they've not actually seen the proof, you know, like yeah. you show me you've made like 10 million in profits, then maybe... I'll invest into you. So it's it's personal. Yeah. I think I appreciate having that like a personal journey cuz I I see the struggles. I push myself. I'm only accountable to me. If it fails it's on me. I don't have to like have to explain to someone else like um <laughs> well you see that money Can that you like, gave oh, me. Why am I late today? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um it would be great to have a partner. Yeah. But at the moment, I'm not really looking because I feel like we work, we work fine. We j we just be good. You're good. Yeah. So good. Uh, um, even in the future, like if we get our partners, it will probably just be for accountability and maybe to expand more. Mm -hmm. But yes, right now I feel like we we are fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we've talked about some things to do with where you draw inspiration from, how your business started, mm -hmm. um, who you're working with, and as well as what pieces you'd like to do in the future. Mm -hmm. What are some of your short-term and long-term goals as we bring the interview to a close? Um, so my short-term goals for this year mm -hmm. is um, to grow the brand. So last year I was, what was the, what was the goal last year? Last year we were, um, expanding or exposing the brand so this year we want to <coughs> grow the brand so mm. um, that means we get more pieces um, get more exposed into the into the market mm -hmm. um, build more like so right now I'm only doing bags and jewelry and belts so if I can make um, if, if, if I can get into doing shoes as well this year mm. that would be a very good thing so for long term as I told you, I would mm -hmm. love to go into jackets. Yes, so yes. basically, um, probably selling all over the world mm. and letting an international people, brand. yes, an international brand mm. and people appreciating the culture that is Africa that is so beautiful and the it people is, yeah. and yeah, that is that is basically it. Those are my future plans. Yeah, yeah. I wish you well in those future plans. Thank you. And I hope that everything you have planned for. V curated designs yeah. shall come to pass. Me too, thank you. I think what you're doing is wonderful as a young lady, mm -hmm. and let's hope that our viewers can follow your path. Yeah, sure. And before we check out and sign out the show, mm -hmm. kindly share your social media handles with our viewers just in case okay. someone would like to reach out to you for whatever reason. Yeah, sure. Um, so <coughs> I'm on Facebook and Instagram as vcurated.ke. No, sorry, underscore ke, and on Twitter, I'm vcurated.ke. 
Okay. Yes. Sawa, sawa. Mm -hmm. And I'm Joy underscore Mochache. Remember, you can uh, find this channel and hashtag us on hashtag why in the morning, hashtag Tuesday Entrepreneurship, Y254 channel on Facebook and Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you guys a rest of a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday. Do take care and be good to yourself.